Hi, I'm Bill Quistorf. I'm the chief pilot for the Snohomish County Sheriff's Office here in Washington State. I'm standing in front of Snowhawk 10. This is a 1970 Bell UH-1H helicopter that's been modified over the years uh, with modifications that include uh, boundary layer research strakes and fast fin kits. I had flown it for about four years with the strakes installed. And then in 2004, I had the tail boom of this aircraft modified at uh, Helipro up in Bellingham, Washington. I had the tail boom replaced and it came without strakes. So when that modification was done, I went up and flew it on a test flight around the pattern in Bellingham. And after that first flight, I landed and I told the maintenance personnel right off the bat, I said, we need the strakes installed. That's how much of a difference the strakes make. Once you fly this aircraft without the strakes and you fly it with the strakes, you will notice a huge difference. In the military, we had um, a technique we called the, the Huey Shuffle. This was something that we taught our students and it was something that we did every time we took off in the Huey. So the Huey Shuffle is when you're taking off and increasing power and you're adding left pedal to counteract the torque effect and the downwash and wind effect on the tail boom. You're adding that left pedal, taking it out, adding it back in as you go through translational lift. Well, with the strakes installed, uh, the strakes break up that wind effect and your, your pedal uh, movement is very minimal. So the Huey Shuffle uh, exists no more once you have the strakes installed on this aircraft. And it's, it's really eye-opening uh, the first time you fly it without the strakes. Uh, the fast fin kit we had installed uh, some years after that, and that has really improved the performance of our tail rotor. Now this aircraft uh, had the Bell 212 tail rotor system installed in 2004, and our tail rotor uh, efficiency is, and effectiveness is, is really improved with that system. So the combination of the strakes, the fast fin, and the 212 tail rotor system really makes uh, a difference and it increases the safety margin for your, uh, pilots when you're operating at high altitudes. Now, that's what we do up here in Snohomish County. In search and rescue, we operate at high altitudes, uh, anywhere from six to 10,000 feet is our uh, typical range for rescue operations. And what we do at, uh, at those altitudes, when I come in on a mission is, I, I don't come right in and conduct the mission. First thing I do is check uh, tail rotor authority and pedal control and cyclic control. So what I'll do is stand off away from the mountain, say whatever altitude we're gonna conduct the mission, 6,000 or 8,000 feet, I'll stand off away from the mountain, a safe distance, I'll come into an OGE hover and I'll see how much pedal uh, is being demanded. How much pedal am I putting in and how much pedal do I have left? If I judge that I don't have enough pedal left, if there's not enough left pedal remaining at that OGE check, then I'll descend and land down in the valley. I'll offload some gear, burn a couple hundred pounds of fuel off, come back up to altitude again and check that again. I need to have that safe pedal margin in order to safely come over uh, the train and conduct rescue operations using our rescue hoist in an OGE hover. So having the, the strakes and the fast fin installed, uh, it just increases that safety margin. And that's the biggest factor, that's the biggest uh, contribution that um, this modification can make. Uh, some years ago, I was called uh, towards the end of the day on a mission. The SAR sergeant gave me a call and said that a f climber had fallen uh, at 9,000 feet in a county just east of us in Chelan County. And so um, it was late in the day. Um, we had just they had the engine replaced in this aircraft here uh, to a beefier engine, uh, 703 with 1,800 shaft horsepower. but. I hadn't tested it at high altitude at 9,000 feet and I wasn't sure if uh, we could safely conduct that mission, plus it was going to be under night vision goggles. So I recommended to the SAR sergeant that uh, he called the Navy 
and that the Navy respond with their MH60, which is a twin engine um, Sikorsky that has plenty of power at high altitude. So the Navy did respond. They had difficulty um, locating the subject at night due to the, uh, it was a full moon and the subject uh, was on the shadow side of the mountain and the moon was super bright. So their goggles uh, just didn't pick him up on, on that side of the mountain. They ended up flying uh, and picking up his partner and his partner pointed out exactly where the subject was. They located him, they attempted to do the rescue and they had a uh, caution light come on in the cockpit. So they had to return to their Navy base. They were not able to complete the mission. And in the meantime, I was on standby. I'd, I'd figured that if the Navy wasn't able to complete the mission at night, that we were going to launch at first light. So first light the next day, which was only a few hours later, uh, we launched this aircraft, flew over there, and uh, we thought initially that the subject who had fallen quite a ways and had numerous injuries may not have survived the night, but when we arrived, uh, he was standing on a ledge and waving to us. And I came in, um, again, at 9,000 feet away from the mountain. I checked our power, our controllability, our, our pedal margin, and I found that I did not have enough uh, left pedal margin to safely do the mission close to the mountain or above the mountain. So we, we went down, we landed in the valley, we offloaded uh, equipment, and in that time I'd burned a couple hundred pounds of fuel off. I came back on scene, again, st stood off from the mountain at 9,000 feet, checked my power, I had plenty of power, plenty of uh, tail rotor authority and pedal margin, and came in and successfully uh, hoist extracted that injured subject off the mountain at 9,000 feet. Uh, that subject would not have survived. He would not have made it um, without the, the modifications on this aircraft. This aircraft capabilities have, have increased dramatically um, with the mod mods that we've done, the engine, the tail rotor, and then couple that with the strakes, the BLR strakes and the BLR fast fin and this aircraft can do amazing, amazing work at, uh, at high altitudes. One other mission that comes to mind is a recovery mission that happened some years ago in a county north of us. There was a climber that fell to his death at uh, the 8,600 foot level of the mountain. Uh, the Forest Service um, was under contract to uh, with, with another uh, private vendor to, to do operations, but that, that vendor was not able to operate at that altitude. So another agency was called in that had a, um, a UH-1, and they attempted to do a hoist recovery, a rescue hoist recovery of the subject at that altitude and were unable to complete it because of um, the, the lack of tail rotor authority at high altitude. So the Forest Service notified us. Uh, we came in the next day, and the first thing I did was just, I just wanted to do a recon of the area, find out where the subject was located, and check our power and, and controllability up there. So uh, I checked it at 8,600 feet and found that I had, uh, had good um, controllability, good safe pedal margin, and that we were able to conduct the mission. So we planned it for the next day, and came back and, and on the first pass, uh, we were able to successfully complete that mission. And that just shows uh, you know, a difference uh, was our aircraft with the modifications that have been done compared to another aircraft without the modifications and they, they were not able to complete the same mission. So uh, we notice and we are very appreciative of all the work that BLR has done to increase the uh, aerodynamic efficiency of the Bell UH-1 and, um, and it's definitely saved lives uh, over the years. I'd like to uh, thank BLR for their donation to our uh, next set of uh, 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 modifications. We recently acquired a second Bell UH-1, standard military configured uh, Bell UH-1 aircraft, and Boundary Layers has donated uh, a fast fin kit, which includes the strakes, 
to search and rescue here in Snohomish County. Uh, this kit will be, is currently being installed uh, down at Northwest Helicopters in Olympia, and that aircraft will provide additional uh, life-saving uh, support to our mission here in search and rescue uh, at our base in Snohomish County.